have brand new Fox polling numbers telling us a lot of different things about the Senate races across the country, five different states. And we are honored today to have two of the best in the business when it comes to polling. Darren Shaw and Chris Anderson, both members of our Fox News election night decision team. Gentlemen, how you doing? No, no pressure, by the way. You know, right, right, we, we, we see you once a year, maybe, and we're going to see you on Tuesday <laughs> night. So welcome here. Just want to share with our viewers right now so some of the numbers we're getting out of Arizona uh, with Cinema and McSally, okay, in Arizona. Our polling shows McSally has a lead. The president won there by about four and a half points uh, two years ago. But in this Senate race right now, this is what we show, okay? McSally 46, Cinema 46. Hold that thought, okay, guys? Because I just want to take our viewers back out here to another area, and that's Missouri. I mean, too close to call in, in uh, Arizona. McCaskill and Holly, they're too close to call, too. 43% to 43% there. Chris, you're digging these numbers. You're talking to people all over the country. What do you see right now, five days out? Well, specifically in Missouri and Arizona, um, these races were both three-point leads for the Democrats there when we first polled these states back in September. Um, what has happened, they've both closed to a tie, and in both cases, we have seen the uh, women moving towards the Republican, not in large numbers, but um, it, they've cut the, cut the gender gap in about half. So um, the Republicans in both those states have made progress among women. Um, there is an enthusiasm gap in Missouri where Democrats are a little bit more excited and interested in the race at this point. We're not seeing that in Arizona. It's matched. Um, Republicans and Democrats equally interested. Um, so both of these are going to come down to the wire. Okay, um, and to use an old cliche, who will show up? Yeah, who will show, who will vote? It comes back to that so often. But the, the, the movement in women in that state, I, I don't know if that's something a lot of people would have suggested. Come over to Indiana, Darren, and maybe you can dissect this for us. Uh, the Democrats, Joe Donnelly, Mike Brown is the, the Republican. This is a state the president won easily two years ago. Look at that spread. It was 20 points in 2016. Beat Hillary Clinton right. by a million votes. You come to the Senate race right now, and our polling shows the Democrat with a seven-point lead. What's happening in Indiana is that different from what Chris is describing there a moment ago. Well, I think a little bit of the bill is candidate effects. Um, in, in Arizona, you've had McSally who's been very aggressive going after Kristen Sinema. Uh, Josh Hawley's run a pretty strong race in Missouri. You know, Claire McCaskill's basically Houdini out there, keep, keeps winning in a state that's traded pretty red. But I tell you, Joe Donnelly has been tough, uh, and, and Braun has not been able to, to sort of make the attacks stick. The ones that have kind of rallied Republican women, as Chris mentioned, in other states. They haven't, you know, they've kind of been bouncing off Donnelly a little bit in Indiana. I'll tell you another thing, Bill. Take a look at that libertarian vote in Indiana. Uh, it's 5%. So you've got undecideds and a third-party vote out there. I'll tell you, the, the, the Republicans in Indiana have to hope that the libertarian vote collapses and that undecideds break against the incumbent. That's always a conventional wisdom, but we'll see if it happens in Indiana. Okay, we're doing something different this year. We just want to explain this to viewers as best we can. We're not doing exit polling anymore. It's called voter analysis, right. and th these are kind of the bullet points. Interviews conducted election day, multiple platforms, 85,000 interviews as opposed to 20,000. Uh, detailed results from 47 different uh, states and allows us to analyze more subgroups. All right, Now, what does all that mean to a mathematician like yourself? So you start on <laughs> Saturday. It runs through Tuesday. Chris, why is this important? Why the change? Sure. So in some ways, this is our methodology catching up with how voters are voting these days. There's so many people voting early um, or by mail, so they're not actually going to the polls, so they're not there for exit pollers to interview. Um, second major innovation is we are talking to all registered voters, not just those who vote. So not only will we come away knowing why people made the decisions that they did at the ballot box, but we should have some real insights into why people stayed home and didn't vote, which could be the determining factor um, in any number of races across okay, the country. Okay, Darren, just add to that, and if, if you can, you're doing this for a reason because you think it's going to bring us more accuracy as opposed to That's elections right. I mean, past. How? Yeah. Well, take a state like Arizona, Bill. I mean, uh, you're going to get close to, you know, close to 100 percent of the vote is going to be mail and not quite 100 percent, but a state like Nevada, where there's also a tough Senate race, uh, Colorado, traditionally a battleground state and presidential, that's a 100% male. Oregon, 
The exit polling traditionally does sort of a cursory, you know, 800 person sample as kind of a fail safe, and then they do their exit polls. They're not really getting you the kind of detailed information about what the majority of the electorate is thinking or doing there. So, as Chris mentioned, you know, America is close to voting 50% convenience voting, absentee, mail, you know, that sort of thing. We're switching methodologies here to try to get a better picture of what those mm -hmm. voters are doing uh, heading into the election. Okay, I just, we showed our viewers just a moment ago the approval ratings in the five states that we just polled between North Dakota and Indiana. Chris, I just need a quick answer on this, and Darren, to you as well. Chris, do you see a blue wave as of today? <laughs> Putting me on the spot. Um, not in the Senate, but I am seeing um, some things that Democrats should be encouraged about in the House. Okay. Darren, what about you? I think that's probably about right. I've, I've adjusted downward from 40, a 40 seat turnover in the House. I'm down a little bit, maybe a little lower than Chris, but we're right at that cut point. If that's a blue wave, then so be it. Mm. See you this weekend, guys. Chris Anderson, Darren Shaw, you bet it. Voter Analysis 2018. Thank you, gentlemen.